Hey folks, it's good to be back with you. I'm gonna be sharing another poem with you today. Uh, it's been a crazy few days. I am no longer in Paris. Um, I'm down in the south of France now. Uh, I was supposed to have a gig last night reading some of my own original poetry at this place, but you can see this is what it looked like. Not exactly the crowd I was hoping for, which is a little bit, a little bit surprising because the last time I was there for a poetry reading, it looked kind of like this. It turned into a full-on mosh pit. It was pretty good. Um, but anyway, I'm back in my bedroom now, and I'm gonna share with you a poem by Theodore Rutka, who's been one of my favorites for a long time, but uh, this poem, like a lot of other poems, maybe means something a little bit different to me now than it used to. So I did a little bit of research, and I found that his family in the early part of the previous century owned a huge, huge greenhouse, 25 acres of greenhouses in Michigan. <clears throat> and that's kind, of, uh, that's kind of an explanation for why a poem like this has all of this flower imagery in it. Um, I also was thinking about this poem because I've been working on my own paintings. Uh, here, I did this uh, the last couple days, thought I'd share it with you. Uh, it's not exactly a geranium, but uh, whatever it is, I kind of like it. Um, the title of the poem I'm going to share is Geranium by Theodor Redka. And without further ado, I'll just read it for you. When I put her out once by the garbage pail, she looked so limp and bedraggled, so foolish and trusting, like a sick poodle or a wizened aster in late September. I brought her back in again for a new routine, vitamins, water, and whatever sustenance seemed sensible. At the time, she had lived so long on gin, bobby pins, half-smoked cigars, dead beer, her shriveled petals falling on the faded carpet, the stale steak grease stuck to her fuzzy leaves. Dried out, she creaked like a tulip. The thing she endured, the dumb dames shrieking half the night, or the two of us, alone, both seedy, me breathing booze at her, she leaning out of her pot towards the window. Near the end, she seemed almost to hear me, and that was scary. So when that snuffling cretin of a maid threw her, pot and all, into the trash can, I said nothing. But I sacked the presumptuous hag the next week. I was that lonely. Now, I'm smiling now because I think that last few lines there is just really, really funny. Like his treatment of the maid, the presumptuous hag, the snuffling cretin of a maid uh, is just really brutal. And I don't know that I've ever read anything quite that brutal in a poem before or since. Um, that's what always kind of used to appeal to me is a sort of directness uh, of that hostility there. But now, um, along with some of this flower imagery, right, uh, that he has up there, like a wise and aster, creaky tulip, geranium is the title. So again, you wise connoisseurs and consumers of poetry will recognize right away that that's a symbol. Um, one of the things that strikes me now is the aloneness in this poem. It's about a guy kind of missing his plant. And even though there's other people in this, we got the Cretan of a maid, um, there's a lot of loneliness as well because the people who come over are dumb dames shrieking half the night. So he's got a party or he's got like girls coming over, but he doesn't like them. They're dumb dames who shriek all night. And this guy from the rest of this poem, he's not a, not a shrieker. His attention to language is too subtle, particularly alliteration. Whatever sustenance seems sensible, um, he says, and continues that on later, the stale steak grease stuck to her fuzzy leaves. This guy likes subtleties in language, not shrieking. So we get this portrait of a guy who is just alone, uh, alone a lot to the point where when someone throws out his pet plant, he's really upset. And I think that's something that uh, kind of can strike home to a lot of us right now. 
So I hope you're all doing better out there than Theodore Recco was when he imagined this poem. Things are good here um, with us. The dog's still dumb. The cat is still demanding. Um, and I'm still doing fine. So I hope all you are as well. Take care till next time. Bye.